everybody, it's Deke Dickerson, and this is the third installment of the series I Like Records. Now, if you've been enjoying this series, make sure that you like it, that you follow it on YouTube, and make sure that you share it with all your friends. Uh, the only way that I'm going to be able to grow this thing and, and keep doing it is uh, if we like it and share it and everybody gets to know about it. So if you can help me out with that, I would really appreciate it. Okay, this week's episode is going to be on a subject that a lot of people talk about, but I don't think very many people actually know much about. Acetate records. You've probably read about them in the news, you know, when you see rare Beatles acetate sells for a million dollars or something like that. To get down to the basic description of what an acetate is, in order for you to produce vinyl records like these, like the ones that we know and love, the first thing that you have to do is you have to cut a record. And you don't cut a record on vinyl. You cut it on a special disc that's made for cutting records. And then they take that disc and they spray it with metal and they peel it off and that's what they use to stamp out vinyl records. So that disc that they use to cut records is commonly referred to as an acetate. It's a bit of a misnomer. Why is that? Because there's no acetate in it. Now, if you're a crate digger and you go looking for a lot of records, you've come across acetates out in the wild. And this is what they look like. It's basically a, a metal disc underneath with a thin layer of nitrous cellulose lacquer on it. And this one, you can really see, it's, this is a blank side, right? And then this side has grooves cut in it. So the place where you have those grooves cut in it is in an old record lathe, like this scully sitting right here. So here is an original acetate or a lacquer disc sitting on the type of cutter that cut those records in the first place. This is an old scully lathe that I've been restoring over the last 10 years. It still doesn't work or else I'd demonstrate how to cut a record for you. But once you cut a record on one of these lathes, then they would spray it with metal, uh, like a you know an aluminum type of metal spray. They would peel that off, and that's what they would make the stampers out of to press up vinyl records. So any of the lacquer discs that were used in vinyl production, they were ruined with that you know spraying on the metal and peeling off process. The ones that you find when you're out digging through crate records like this one are records that people took home, you know, to listen to what they had done in the studio that day. Sometimes you find records that are one-of-a-kind performances. They literally don't exist anywhere except on one acetate record. And that's where you start getting into really collectible and, and rare vinyl. And I don't like talking about record values very much. Uh, it's something that doesn't interest me that much, but record collectors that find one-of-a-kind performances on acetate records will pay crazy astronomical amounts of money for the right ones. Now, this one here is an interesting one that I found in a garage sale. There was a bunch of uh, Earl Garner stuff, uh, and this acetate was in there. And you can see this is a, a note from the studio engineer to, to Earl, uh, up yours. <laughs> he may have written that as a joke, or maybe that's the name of the song. New Swing Selection by E.G., this is with the five pieces. Dig the sound balance. Is it okay? So that's why people have these acetate records, is they would take them home and listen to them to, on their own record player to see if they liked their performance in the studio. So one thing that's important to point out about disc records or acetates is that tape recording was not a thing here in the United States until after World War II. And it was really not until the early 1950s that tape recording became sort of a popular thing, and it wasn't until the 1960s that people at home could buy their own tape recorders. So disc recording was sort of the predominant thing in this country from, you know, the 1930s through the 1950s if you wanted a sample of something. And, and you find a lot of acetate records like this one, York Community High School Orchestra Contradance. Um, on-the-spot recording company. That's what most of these are. And you find records that are like this one that are just people, you know, Lou, October 1946, and it'll just be people at a party just talking or joking around or having fun. So there's tons and tons of these sort of homemade uh, acetate lacquer disc records out there. And it's really difficult to find the, the ones that you really want to find, which are unreleased 
not available anywhere else type of records for whatever music that it is that you like. So, you know, acetate records were just kind of cut as basically a throwaway thing. Like, here, let's cut this record. You can take it home and listen to it. This one's pretty fun. Mother and Jim and Friends Drinking. Uh, so, you know, they were meant to be played a few times. They were never, ever meant to last for 50 or 60 or 70 years and to be played hundreds and hundreds of times. The material is actually a very soft uh, surface, and if you play these things a hundred times, you basically just wear out the grooves. They're not meant to be played uh, over and over and over again like vinyl records. And storage is also a problem, uh, and just the sort of the, the nature of the, the the lacquer that's put on these discs. Um, they don't last forever, like they're all eventually going to <laughs> go back to the earth. But here's a good example of, of what happens when a disc is not properly taken care of. You can see the acetate material actually like pulling away from the metal disc, and that's, that's what's underneath. And then the little tiny thin layer that you cut the record on has come loose over the years from improper storage or, or whatever reason. Okay, I'm just going to be thumbing through some other acetates while I talk about this uh, last record that I'm going to play. Um, the rarest and probably most valuable kind of uh, acetates there are, as I was mentioning, are unreleased song performances that are kind of one-of-a-kind things. Uh, here's an interesting one by D. Clark, the soul singer. Uh, I looked this one up. This looks like a song that he uh, recorded for, for a label, but this version is not the released version. So it's an unreleased version of a song that he did cut again. Um, and these things, you know, they're just fascinating to find out in the wild. But probably the, the rarest and most valuable things are unreleased performances that don't exist anywhere else. And that's, I'm going to get around to this last record I'm going to play. So what we have here is an unreleased rockabilly acetate from the 1950s. And interesting story behind this record, I was interviewing a Missouri rockabilly artist named Rodney Scott, and this is going back to the late 1980s. I used to do a fanzine called the Show Me Blowout, and it was all about Missouri rock and roll from the 50s and 60s. And, uh, you know, Rodney Scott cut several really great records on his own. You should look those up on YouTube. And he let me look through his 45s, and I saw this acetate in there. And I said, well, what is this? And he said, I have no idea. Somebody gave it to me. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember anything about it. And I said, well, can I have it? And he goes, sure. So the song is, I Got a Date to Cut a Cake, vocal by Neil Wheeler. And, of course, there's nothing online about Neil Wheeler. He was sort of an unknown guy. Maybe related to Oni Wheeler from Missouri? I have no idea. But um, this song was so great when I heard it that I eventually covered it with my own band, the Echophonics. The, my version of this song is on my first album, number one hit record. Now this acetate remains unreleased. I'm saving this for the right rockabilly compilation to be released on. So I'm going to play you a little bit of this. So you can hear what the original recording of I Got a Date to Cut a Cake sounds like. But I can't play the whole record or else it'll wind up on some European bootleg next week. But uh, anyway, this is the payoff. Digging through crates of records, looking for acetates. If you find an unreleased rock and roll recording, soul recording, blues recording, doo-wop recording uh, that doesn't exist anywhere else except for this one record, that's when you've struck gold. So let me play you a little bit of this unreleased rockabilly acetate. I got a date to cut a cake. The lyrics are so great on this. You have all the fun. 
I'm sorry now, but it's too late to right the wrongs you've done. Yeah, sorry. That's all you get to hear. Otherwise, it's going to be bootlegged. I'm waiting for the right compilation album to put this out on. But there you go. That That's uh, it for our I Like Records episode on acetate records. So go out there and dig around in those crates and see what you can find. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. The life you live in won't do the church. You better learn how to cheat that junk, cause you got to go down, got to go down. You better learn how to cheat that junk, but you got to go down, got to go down. You better learn how to cheat that junk, but you got to go down, got to go down.